Hi y'all, it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of some of my favorite standalones. Uh, you might notice I'm wearing the same shirt <laughs> as I was wearing in part one. And that's because I filmed all of, all of the video in one go, but I realized it was gonna be too long, so I just split it, but I filmed it at the same time. So that's why I look the same, that's why I'm dressed the same. So I hope you enjoy part two. So let's get started. The Place to Hang the Moon by Kate Albus. And this is an historical fiction around World War II um, with siblings William, Edmund, and Aunt Anna. And their grandmother dies, and um, but she's taken care of them since their parents died. They do need a guardian and they don't want to go to an orphanage. Um, because back then orphanage especially, it seems were very horrible. Plus they ran the chance of being split up and this was the dark days of World War II in London. Guardians are not in big supply. The person who handles their estate, because they're pretty wealthy, what they want to inherit. So not to get anybody that would take advantage of them, they, he says, go be evacuated with the other evacuees. And the people that host, the host families that take, took in evacuees, maybe that's how they could find their next guardian, their new family, and see if that would work and just keep their predicament a secret because like I said, you don't want someone that's gonna take advantage of the situation and take you in just for the money. But they move from one billet to another, so one house from another. The children suffer cruel trickery of foster brothers, cold realities of outdoor toilets, and the hollowness of empty stomachs. The only comfort they find is the lending library and the kind librarian, Nora Mueller. And they think she'd be an excellent person to stay with. Except that her German husband's whereabouts are currently unknown and some of the villagers consider her unsuitable. It shows the importance of family, the ones you choose, the ones you're given. Also, judging people for other people, like they are horrible to this librarian just because her husband is German and no one knows where he is. That's not her fault, but she's treated horribly. As are so many people. Like reading middle grade, I've learned so many things and looked up that were actually true. Like I think when Italy and other countries fell to the Nazis, that people, like any Italians in certain countries that hadn't fallen, they were sent off or they were treated just like they were Nazis and they didn't even live there. They weren't even like in Italy. They didn't even live in Italy anymore, but just because they were Italian and Italy fell to the Nazis, they were treated like a Nazi. Like it's so ignorant, <laughs> but so atmospheric. So heartwarming. Love these kids. Love Mrs. Mueller, that library. Such a great book. Then we have Antigua de Fortune and of the High Seas by Anna Rainbow and Ali Hyatt. I don't think this is gonna be a series, but I really wish it would be. This was so incredible. Very atmospheric. The sea, the magic. Oh. Antigua has always had ocean in her blood. But as the high-born daughter of an officer, she's expected to wear dresses, stay on land, and fear the sea. But then the Pirate King strikes, wielding his deadly turquoise magic, and kidnaps her beloved younger brother, along with every boy on the island. It's time for Antigua to take to the high seas to rescue the stolen boys of Haven. So incredible. The Pirate King, the backstory of that, why you're supposed to be scared of the sea, her backstory, what we learn, just all the secrets that we uncover, and every the journey she goes on. And, every intricate little deep everything was so great in this and i really loved it highly recommend i really want more and we have sweep story of a girl and her monster by jonathan oxier and this broke my heart <laughs> and i don't think i would have read it if i had known it was going to break my heart but i'm glad i didn't know because i still am happy i read it because it was such a beautiful and amazing story kids were chimney sweeps back in the day and he talks about the author talks about it in the author's note and everything that went on to stop this because so many kids died from doing this and nan is orphaned but she was taken in by a chimney sweep just called the sweep and he disappeared one day and it's been five years and she had no other choice but to work for another chimney sweep who was ruthless and cruel but she gets stuck in a chimney fire and she thinks it's all over, but instead she awakes to find herself unharmed in an abandoned attic and she's not alone. Huddled in the corner is a mysterious creature, a golem made from soot and ash. 
came from this little lump of coal that the sweep had given her and told her to keep with her and she always thought of it as like her good luck thing but it was a golem they just carve a new life together and her friend in here he's so he has my heart him and the golem it's just such a heartbreakingly beautiful story and it just shows so much and the woman she meets that helps her who is jewish but doesn't talk about it she left her like so many amazing things about judaism like with people dealt with it's just horrible and chimney sweeping and the kids orphans trying to belong somewhere it's just such a great book highly recommend we have The Girl Who Could Not Dream by Sarah Beth Durst. This was the first book I read by her, but this was what made me fall in love with her writing. This was such an incredible and unique story. Very vivid, imaginative, atmospheric. She can't dream, but she really wants to. Her favorite place is her hidden shop beneath her parents' bookstores, where dreams are bought and sold to um, select strength, secretive strangers. And she's fascinated by dreams, weird, scary, magical, because she cannot, she's never had a single dream of her own. And then the shop's dreams are all stolen and her mom and dad go missing. So she must unravel the truth to save her parents. And together with her best friend, a monster named Monster, <laughs> she has to decide who to trust with her family's guarded secrets. And it's just, Every single detail is amazing and creative and unique. It's fast paced, you don't want to put it down. And it just shows the power of dreams and just and the imagination really. And her monster, I love him so much, he has my heart. And everything her and her friend do and the journey they go on, so much danger, adventure, great friendship, loved it. And we have The Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. This is my favorite book by Sophie Anderson. The House with Chicken Legs. I don't think I've ever been a middle grade novel I haven't liked, but it wasn't my favorite because I was annoyed almost the whole book with the main character. Just because of her attitude and how she treated the old lady. Like, and just, I know she had her reasons, but I was just annoyed at her most of the book. And then The Girl Who Speaks Bear, I think it is. I really liked that one. That was really good. But this is my definite favorite. It's through amazing illustrations throughout. Magic awaits, all you have to do is believe. When 13 year old, Olia steps through a magical doorway. She discovers another land, a land tangled by magic, where hope is lost and a scheming wizard holds all the power. Soon Olia learns that she is destined to save this land, but with time running out and her new friends and family in danger, she must search for the magic within herself to save everything and everyone she loves. So it's a fairy tale adventure and well, courage, love, family, and this other world they go into and this house and how it's all connected, the backstory, her grandmother is amazing. And this little guy, another amazing little fox-like guy. And all the characters they meet in this other world. And the danger they face. And all the tasks she has to do. I just really love this. And there's little tidbits that kind of tie all her novels together. So the part at the end that tied in to one of her other books. I thought that was brilliant. I really enjoyed that. We have The Light Hunters by Dan Walker. For centuries, energy-wielding light hunters battled monsters ravaging the land, saving their world from a terrible fate. That is, until a single disastrous mistake turned people against light, making this powerful and ancient force a feared and distant memory. Meet Lux, the boy with light in his eyes. On the surface, he looks like a normal 12-year-old, but Lux has a secret. Not only can he wield light, he might be the finest light healer the world has ever seen. When Lux uses his power to save his best friend Maya after a terrifying attack, his light draws a strange, shadowy figure to town, aiming to use his powers for evil. As he is catapulted into the world of the Light Hunters, Lux and his friends race against time to locate a roaming monster and stop it before it destroys his hometown. But is the monster the real terror, or is there a greater danger lurking in the shadows, waiting for its moment to strike? This is just another creative, unique story. The Light, the Light Hunters, the whole backstory. His friend's incredible and in how she helps out, even though she doesn't have the the light power or whatever and everybody that they meet at this it's just i really love this i wanted more hopefully one day there will be but i don't know but i hope he puts out more books soon we have hollow chest a brita sandstorm this is another one i won in a good reads giveaway i think this was around world war ii also but it has like a fantasy 
part and there's such beautiful illustrations in here. And I just thought it was a unique idea for a World War II story. And all the pain from war in here. His brother comes back different. He has everything while his dad's gone or while his brother's gone. Her dad has died. Like his mom's always sad. There's a new guy lurking around her. It's just so much pressure on him. I think life can go back to normal and he can be a kid again, but his brother comes back from war different. And then he learns of these Then he learns about war wolves and they're terrifying ancient beasts who consume the hearts of those broken by grief. The wolves have followed the soldiers back home from the front. And if Charlie, the main character, wants to save Theo, his brother, he's gonna have to find them and get his brother's heart back. But can a heart that's been eaten ever be replaced? Hope, so important, hope, faith. It's a fantasy, but such a raw and honest depiction of what, a war, what war can do to somebody. And not just them, but it branches out to their family and those around them. Just so beautiful. There's terror, hope, longing, and how not only powerful hope is, but the power of love. You have such empathy for these characters. The writing is incredible. And like I said, no matter the darkest of times, love will keep us going. So, love this. I have The Kingdom of Secrets by Christine Morel. This was so amazing. Such a great idea for a story. And I really love these two girls. And Prismina is a balloonist daughter. Her mom's died and it's just her and her dad. Um, and he wants her feet on the ground, even though she wants to be just like her mom, who was a balloonist. And then this girl, Abigail, bursts in and steals her most prized possession. And she promises to give it back if Prismina smuggles a uh, treacherous package onto her father's next flight when but then her dad's arrested and it's up to Prismina to make things right and Prismina and Abby journey into the heart of a brewing rebellion they encounter a hulking alley monster a runaway hot air balloon and a feisty gang of orphans but nothing's what it seems and it seems like everything she's ever been taught in her life or told is a lie and when she uncovers secrets that connect her to the rebellion She'll have to, she knows she'll have to take a stand. And this is about discovering who she really is on more than, than one level. And who she wants to be and what she wants to do and stand for. And believing in yourself, being who you want to be, and the friendship that grows between them, and then the rebellion, the balloons, the kingdom. And Kingdom of Secrets is a great title because boy is it full of secrets. <laughs> and everything we learn, so incredible. Highly recommend. We have The Unadoptables by Hannah Took. Naked Hardback. I love this book. I was hoping it was going to be a series, but I don't think it is because I know she has another book coming out and it doesn't seem related. And I don't know if it's because of some of the uproar that came because of the title name, The Unadoptables. But people get so offended about everything now. And I've talked to some people who were adopted and they don't even understand why people got so upset because the evil matron says they're unadoptable, but they're not. It's, she thinks they're unadoptable, but they know their individuality is what makes them special. And people just took it the wrong way. They just took, I don't know. And a lot of them didn't even read the book. So everything unique about them is what made them special and what made them amazing and the joke was on her. And so people need to stop doing that. Little Tulip Orphanage Rules for Baby Abandonment. Rule one, the baby should be wrapped in a cotton bl blanket. Rule two, the baby should be placed in a wicker basket. Rule three, the baby should be deposited on the topmost step. Not once have the rules for baby abandonment been broken. That is until the autumn of 1880 when five babies are left in an outrageous circumstances. One in a toolbox, one in a coal bucket, one in a picnic camper, one in a wheat sack, and finally one in a coffin-shaped basket. Those babies were Lada, Egg, Fena, Sim, and Milu. And all their, their cruel matron says they're unadoptable, they know what I just said, and so determined to stay together. When a most sinister gentleman appears and threatens to tear them apart, the gang makes a daring escape across the frozen canals of Amsterdam. But is their real home and their real family already closer than they realize? It was great humor. Found family, friendship, like fast paced, witty, everything we uncover about Milu. And each kid is so special on their own. 
way and everything and one of their, this house they travel to and stay at like it's just so atmospheric and i just loved everything about this these kids are so incredible highly recommend and the next is another one that i cross-eyed and didn't notice for my spooky books but it's one of my favorite obviously but favorite spooky books ever really so i'm so sad that i didn't put it in that video but it's opie's ghost by justina ireland and harper collins has sent me this one so thank you harper collins this was so incredible. So this shows racism, social classes, ghosts, justice, revenge, so many amazing lessons in here. Ophelia Harrison used to live in a small house in the Georgia countryside, but that was before the night in November 1922 and the cruel acts that took her home and her father from her, which was the same night that Ophie learned she could see ghosts. Now Ophie and her mother are living in Pittsburgh with relatives they barely know. In the hopes of earning enough money to get their own place, Mama has gotten Ophie a job as a maid in the same old manor house where she works. Daffodil Manor, like the wealthy Carruthers family who owns it, is haunted by memories and prejudices of the past, and as Ophie discovers, ghosts as well. Ghosts who have their own loves and hatreds and desires, ghosts who have wronged others, and ghosts who have themselves been wronged. And as Ophie forms a friendship with one spirit whose life ended suddenly and unjustly, she wonders if she might be able to help, even if she comes to realize that Daffodil Manor may hold more secrets than she bargained for. Thing that happens in the beginning where she realizes she can see ghosts that was such a brilliantly written and heartbreaking scene and knowing that all of those things could have really happened back then except maybe not seeing ghosts but who knows but the rest of it and it was so atmospheric between this manor the ghosts in the house the historical setting the ghost she encounters the little boy oh the ghost she meets, that the woman that she meets that she befriends, the old lady in the house who's so mean and prejudiced, and then the other people in the house, her mom and her aunt, I think they stay with when they move, and every, her backstory, and the backstory of this manor, and the ghost that she becomes friends with, the twists at the end, are you kidding me? Such a great mystery, full of suspense, danger, it gets really dark, Lots of heart. So hauntingly beautiful. Absolutely love this. Then I'm gonna quickly show two books by the same author a few times. We have The House of 100 Clocks and The Garden of Lost Secrets by A.M. Howe. Both historical fiction type reads. Both different and just utterly incredible stories. June 1905. Helena and her parrot Orbit are swept off to Cambridge when her father is appointed clockwinder to one of the wealthiest men in England. There's only one rule. The clocks must never stop. Soon, Helena discovers the house of 100 clocks holds many mysteries. A ghostly figure, strange notes, and stolen winding keys. Can she work out the house's secret before time runs out? So the backstory of this house, the clocks, so good, so creative. And the mystery behind it all, whatever, and what's happening. The bird, so good. October 1916. Claire has been sent to stay with her aunt and uncle while England is at war. But when she reaches their cottage on an enormous country estate, Claire is plunged into a tangle of secrets. A dark locked room, a scheming thief, and a mysterious boy who only appears at night. Clara has a secret of her own too, a terrible one about her brother fighting in the war. And as the secrets turn to danger, Clara must find the courage to save herself and those around her. So much secrets and mystery, so atmospheric uh, at this cottage and this country estate, and the whole backstory and all the secrets going on there, and the letter in her pocket that she kept and hasn't even read herself and won't show anybody, and then the boy that comes out, of, it's just all so great really love her books. I have her newest one and I can't wait to read that. We have Never Tell. Beautiful cover. And Glassheart by Katherine Orton. Perfect winter read and so atmospheric. This is very like a dark fairy tale and so creative, unique. I loved it. Sometimes it takes a little courage to discover magic. 11 year old Lena has never seen the world beyond the prison camp until the night she escapes with her best friend Bogdan. As the pair journey across a snowy Russian wilderness, they are pursued by a vengeful sorceress and her pack of shadow wolves. The children will need every ounce of bravery and a little sorcery of their own if they are to survive. Dark, like they're in a prison camp when this starts. The backstory of all of that, the sorceress, her own mom, her, the wolves, the little, the little, I think it's a little girl, it's whispering never tell, which is a little creepy. <laughs> It's just so incredible. I highly recommend this. Right, through the glass, the magic is waiting. 
Nana and her uncle travel everywhere together, replacing stained glass windows and war-torn buildings. When a mysterious commission takes them to the lonely moors of Dartmoor, Nana discovers a wild and powerful magic which threatens everything. Can Nana protect those she loves, even if it means fighting darkness herself? Another dark like fairy tale. This place that they go and the whole backstory of that, the magic there, the dark force, the thing that like possesses her uncle to get him there, the rattlesticks, the spirits and their powers. They're like a guide. And the imp caster and the windows and their significance and this putting in this place and the whole significance of this place and how she's all connected to it. But all happened to her and her back's like the war. She's such a, she's such a creative and imaginative writer. She does dark fairy tale historical fiction like stories so well. She's like the master at it. And lastly, Tin and Pog. Padraig Kenny. He's the author of the Rookhaven series. And so far I've read all of his books except for the sequel to that, which I have and I'll be reading very soon. I read Tin first and Pog last. And I love them both so much. Tin, if I had to pick Tin, would probably be my favorite. Because it's got more of that steampunk type a little bit. And his incredible his stories are also always so unique and incredible. Like they're just like a bonus though, because his character, you fall in love with his characters. He's just such an incredible author. Orphan Christopher works for Mr. Absalom, an engineer of mechanical children. He's happy being the only real boy among his scrap metal buddies made from bits and bobs until an accident reveals an awful truth. What follows is a remarkable adventure as the friends set out to discover who and what they are and even what it means to be human. So mechanical children. All the characters are all so unique, different in their own ways, and probably nicer humans than humans are, which is always a nice discussion. And all the twists in here, what you uncover, the journey they go on together, gets a little dark and dangerous. Loved it. After their mother dies, David and Penny move to her family's old house in the forest. Dad says it's a fresh start, but it feels sad and empty without Mom. And there are noises in the attic. A small furry creature is living in the roof. There are other creatures too, less friendly ones, but seem to be multiplying. Only with Pog's help can David and Penny save themselves and goodness in the world, if they can resist promises from the darkness. So other great messages, dark, this one's probably even darker than 10. It's just so original. And this house is so atmospheric. These kids are so incredible. He's just brilliant, I love him. All right y'all, that concludes part two of my some of my favorite standalones. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope You'll subscribe if you would like to, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye!